evening, everyone. Welcome to a very special webinar today. We've all witnessed a notable surge in the Nikkei and Japanese stocks, coupled with the long-awaited decision by the Bank of Japan to raise their interest rates. It is now in a positive zone. Okay, so the Japanese market is climbing back into the limelight for many investors. We want you to be well informed of the Japanese market now, as well as some of the ways that you can get your portfolio exposed. Okay, today we have a very special guest with us from the Japanese Stock Exchange, and he will be covering uh, several topics with us today. So this my this includes the recent trend of the Japanese stock market, prices, wages, and corporate profits, as well as some initiatives by JPX themselves which highlight the improvements being made. So be sure to pay attention for that. Okay. Now, uh, a little bit about the Japanese market. Uh, we have, as we know, as we all know, with uh, NVIDIA surging forward and all the different trends in AI and semiconductors, this is one of the places that uh, along the supply chain, we have many Japanese companies that are contributing to this surge in the AI and semiconductor trend. Okay. So uh, I do not want to explain too much. Um, I would like to just introduce a very special guest we have joining us today. He is a senior advisor from JPX Tokyo Stock Exchange, engaging in a wide range of market participants, including fund managers and family officers. Now, please allow me to introduce you and hand over the time to Mr. Mark Lee. Uh, Mr. Billy, all yours now. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, I have three points to make. Uh, first is that uh, we want to thank uh, the audience for, for joining us tonight. And of course, to uh, Philip Securities for giving us, giving us this time to share with you uh, what is happening in Japan, uh, Japanese equity market in particular. And point number two is that I would like to qualify that uh, what I'm going to share tonight is only for information purposes. So it should in no way be construed as um, recommendations to invest in Japan. And um, thirdly, uh, actually a small kind of a, um, explanation. You see on the slide that we have JPX, and then below that we have Tokyo Stock Exchange. Um, in this presentation, I will be using this JPX and Tokyo Stock Exchange interchangeably. Uh, JPX is the holding company, uh, whereas Tokyo Stock Exchange is the business unit uh, whereby many companies are listed uh, on uh, TAC. Okay, and with that, uh, I will begin my presentation today. Um, the next slide, please. Okay, today uh, my presentation will be divided into two parts. Um, part one, I will draw um, into the uh, so-called the macroeconomic developments of Japan, including the various policies uh, uh, meted out by the government, as well as the uh, macroeconomic uh, development of the Japanese uh, economy. And then the second part, I will touch on the uh, uh, initiatives uh, undertaken by the exchange uh, so far and going forward. Next slide, please. Okay, um, this slide, uh, you see three uh, big circles. Um, there is a lot of explanation to do here. Um, actually, there are several changes we see in Japan and all these changes uh, were brought about by various um, factors. Uh, first, I will emphasize the red circle. Um, the keyword is all Japan policy push. Mm -hmm. And not only Tokyo Stock Exchange, but also the government, the regulator, in this case, the JFSA, and the MITI, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, are working together to move things forward as one team. And uh, the exchange actually requested um, our listed companies to take action on cost of capital management in March uh, 2023. That was last year. Um, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida san uh, actually has for months fracked his makeover of a NISA as part of his new capitalism scheme uh, to boost household wealth and asset holdings by helping households, I mean, uh, in individual investors in Japan, invest in risky assets such as stocks. Um, by the way, NISA, N-I-S-A, uh, stands for Nippon Individual Savings Account. And thanks to that, um, the Japanese regulator, uh, JFSA, has introduced the expansion of tax exemptions under NISA for retail investors from this year that could trigger the real saving, uh, the real shift of uh, savings to investment. And MITI, uh, which is the Ministry of uh, Economy, Trade and Industry, has newly formulated guidelines for corporate takeovers and m and transactions. So the exchange is actually working in synergy with the uh, other Japanese agencies 
in an all Japan effort. At the same time, uh, Japanese macroeconomic environment is showing uh, many changes. Um, there is rising inflation, starting with cost push, cost, uh, push inflation, uh, transitioning to demand pool inflation. And then if you look at the corporate trends, shareholder conscious management is gradually gaining ground. And many companies are now trying to maximize the value of company and shareholder return by improving capital efficiency and preparing for capital expenditures and m &As. So these changes are the main reasons why we at the Tokyo Stock Exchange can say that there is more to come. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, um, this slide shows um, statistics of prices, wages, and corporate profits. And uh, uh, on the left-hand side, the uh, so-called core consumer price index for all, all items, excluding fresh food and energy, are steadily rising since January 2022. And then on the right-hand side, nominal wages are also gradually on the rise. And at the bottom side, you see that profits of companies are rising, especially for export-related companies, uh, mainly due to the weaker yen. So uh, this slide shows you that positive cycle among prices, wages, and companies' profit has been seen. Uh, we move on to the next slide, please. Right, um, there are two slides here. Uh, on the left-hand side is the uh, price trend of uh, the major benchmark in Japan, the Nikkei 225. Um, so this is a price trend that has been going on very strongly since um, we will say maybe like uh, more than a year ago. And it, uh, today the Nikkei 225 closed at 40,414. And so it is still above 40,000. Uh, 40, and you can see from the graph on the right now, um, the main investors who drive the strong momentum are foreign institutional investors. So since April um, last year, net flows from foreign institutional investors have jumped on expectations for Japan's economic recovery and improvement in corporate capital efficiency. Um, to further share some details, the orange graph shows that when buy and sell amounts are combined, the buy amount is 41 billion USD, more than the sell amount. In fact, we have never seen such a picture before. Next slide, please. Here, uh, I'm going to touch on some new features of the NISA program. As I mentioned, this is the Nippon Individual Savings um, Account, uh, meant to encourage uh, Japanese households to start investing in risky assets. Okay. Under the new NISA, the tax exemption system was dramatically improved. A maximum tax exam amount is now more than double. And tax exemption period is now permanent. And resulting from this change, the number of accounts and purchase amount have already increased. In fact, uh, what we do see from the reports that are gradually coming out is that the Japanese retail investors invest not only in foreign stocks, but also in Japanese stocks, especially the high dividend stocks and Japanese ETFs through the new NISA account. Uh, with that, uh, we will go on to touch on the second part of my uh, presentation, which are the initiatives taken by the exchange and uh, uh, and the reason behind it. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Yes. Um, first of all, um, I need to provide some basic information about TAC. Okay, TAC, Tokyo Stock Exchange, has three market segments. As you can see from the graph, prime, standard, and growth. Uh, we have structured our market segment in 2022, almost like two years ago, um, to make each segment's concept clear, and that resulted in prime, standard, and growth markets. Companies can choose which market to list on according to the stage of development. Prime is a market suitable to companies which cater their business on constructive dialogue with global investors. There are currently more than 1,600 companies on Prime, and total market cap is more than 5,500 billion USD. And the listing criteria on Prime are stricter than most of the other so-called uh, major overseas exchanges. And in terms of the concept of Prime, we want the companies listed in this section to be the main investment targets by foreign institutional investors. Uh, with that, uh, the next slide, please. Okay, this slide shows board independence and committee adoption. Um, 
We have been pushing forward the corporate governance reform for more than two decades. This reform picked up pace under Abenomics, which started in 2012. Uh, with the Japanese government's full support, the two codes, namely the Stewardship Code and Corporate Governance Code, were introduced in 2014 and 2015, respectively. Eight years have passed, and there are changes that can be seen on the corporate side, as well as the market side. And the number of independent directors has increased drastically. Now, let's look at the graph on the left-hand side. Um, if you look at the blue line, so in 2014, in 6% of the companies, at least one third of the board members are independent. And today, this ratio is 95% of prime listed companies. Um, by the way, uh, if you look at the red line below, uh, how you, um, what's the meaning of this red line? Okay, the red line indicates the percentage of companies whose um, board members uh, account for more than, independent board members account for more than half of their board members. Okay, and then on the graph on the right hand side, the number of companies adopting nomination or compensation committees was only about 10% in 2015, but now it is around 90%. Next slide, please. On cross shareholdings. Okay, unwinding cross shareholdings has progressed gradually. And if you look at the graph on the right hand side, uh, this shows the ratio of cross shareholdings to net assets. If you look at the graph here, for most of the companies, the ratio of cross shareholdings to net assets is very low. Um, say for example, um, to the right hand side of the dotted line, um, over here, uh, if the ratio is is more than twenty, it's between twenty to twenty five percent. That only accounts for four percent of the topics constituents. So it is actually a very small uh, number of the uh, so called TSC listed companies. And also, criteria have also become stricter in the institutional investors guidelines for exercising uh, voting rights. So again, on the same uh, graph, um, the ISS, uh, which stands for Institutional Shareholder Services, um, they have specified that um, if uh, more than 20% of net assets in cross shareholdings as a guideline for voting against management. Okay, now we move on to this graph about price to book ratio. As we have seen, things are improving uh, pretty good in this decade for TAC listed companies. But how about the valuation? As an exchange, we think it is not enough. Uh, looking back at history, uh, Japanese companies have long been funded mainly by borrowing from banks, and corporate management has been conducted with banks and group or parent companies in mind. And as a result, shareholder-oriented corporate management was not the top priority, thereby resulting in low PB ratio and ROE in the stock market. Uh, look at the graph on the left-hand side. In July 2022, 50% on the prime market have PB ratio of lower than one. And then if you look at the graph on the right-hand side, the ratio of companies whose PB ratio is lower than one within major stock indices is 43% in Japan, compared with 5% in the US and 24% in Europe. Next slide. This slide is on ROE, okay? And on the left-hand side, under prime company, 47% um, of the prime market have ROE lower than 8%. And then if you look at the right-hand side, the ratio of companies whose ROE is lower than 8% within major stock indices is 40% in Japan compared with 14% in the US and 19% in Europe. So by looking at PB ratio and ROE, there is room for improvement for Japanese companies. As I mentioned, um, the exchange would like to motivate companies to achieve improvement in corporate value. So we requested our listed companies to change the mindset of the management in March last year. The request is targeted at prime and standard listed companies to practice the so-called management conscious of cost and of capital and stock price based on the balance sheets rather than merely being aware of sales and profit on the income statement. And it can be broken down into three steps. 
First is to analyze the current cost of capital and return on capital at board level. Then formulate a plan for improvement and disclose it. And we also re requested these companies to improve dialogue with shareholders. The last process is to execute and update the plans to constructive dialogue with investors. Um, by the way, these requests are not a mandatory issue. Okay. Okay. Um, we have um, published a list of uh, companies that have disclosed information in accordance with the request to inform investors of who is taking action, thereby encouraging companies to make a proactive uh, effort. And we are updating this white list once uh, in a month to show the progress. To show the progress and in a way to give implicit pressure to the companies um, and uh, that are not responding to our request. If you take a look of this uh, uh, so-called list here, uh, the top part are companies listed in prime, the bottom part are companies listed in standard. You see that many well-known companies they have uh, uh, disclosed their action in English as well. For example, Fanark, Empras, uh, and uh, Kyosara, et cetera. These are well-known Japanese companies. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And uh, this slide, uh, we'll take a look of um, what companies are actually trying to do to improve their value. As you can see on the left graph, uh, many companies disclose their initiatives in their midterm management reports and financial result presentation material. And then if you look at the right-hand side, the graph on the right-hand side, um, as a specific measure of improvement, many companies mention investment for growth, strengthening shareholder returns, sustainability initiatives, human capital investment, and review of a business portfolio. Next. Um, actually, a difficulty we have is um, trying to overcome, uh, is trying to persuade Japanese companies to disclose um, uh, in English. As I said, prime market is a market of, for companies which cater the business and constructive dialogue with global investors. If you look at this graph, the, the first two bars actually um, shows the previous uh, so-called TAC first section companies. And in 2020, only 72% of companies uh, reported in English, whereas in 2022, the number has gone up to 97%. Um, we think the prime list, uh, prime market list of companies should endeavor to simultaneously disclose information in English and in Japanese, and we will prioritize making mandatory the English disclosure of financial reports and timely uh, disclosure information. This will be applicable starting from April 2025. And so with that, um, we think it will be easier for foreign investors to get information of Japanese companies. Okay, I've come to the so-called the last few slides of my presentation. And here, we would like to introduce to you the Japanese ETF market. And this graph is a comparison of Asian countries' ETF market size. As you can see, uh, the Japanese ETF market is the biggest in the Asia Pacific, followed by uh, China, Taiwan, Australia, Korea, India, Hong Kong, and Singapore in that uh, order. And in fact, the AUM, the asset under management of uh, Tokyo ETF market now has reached 84 trillion yen, which is about 550 billion uh, US dollars. Okay, the next slide, we have a uh, number of uh, figures. Uh, currently, there are more than 300 ETF listed in Tokyo Stock Exchange, and there are 19 issuers uh, with 12 registered market makers. As I mentioned, the AUM is currently 84 trillion Japanese uh, yen. So we have a very healthy ecosystem as far as ETF market is concerned. And the liquidity, uh, which, which is also very good, um, uh, is due to the fact that we have 12 registered market makers. These are professional institutional market makers uh, who come in and make sure that prices um, are competitive for investors uh, to in take part in. Again, some more so-called figures for you to uh, uh, 
uh, digest, right? Uh, what I would like to emphasize here is that if you are considering taking um, exposure in Japanese equity, um, the uh, TAC listed ETF market is definitely one area you should start with. And we have over 120 different uh, Japanese equity funds available on the market. And these ETFs cover various strategies, such as major index trackers, sector specific funds, and thematic ETFs. Okay, in this slide, um, we compile a list of uh, ETFs that have big AUMs, exceeding 100 billion uh, Japanese yen, or about uh, 660 million USDs. And this slide shows the ETFs that are linked to the prominent uh, so-called uh, indices in Japan namely Topics, Nikkei 225, and JPX Nikkei 400. In fact, if you look at the right-hand side, um, trust fees, um, the most cost-effective option actually goes down to just 4.5 basis points, uh, which is very, very cheap. Um, um, and for your information, they are actually issued by BlackRock, iShare, uh, uh, via the iShare brands. This is for your information only. And as I mentioned just now, the ETF market in Japan um, enjoys excellent liquidity, right? Uh, the left-hand graph shows you the trading uh, so-called uh, activity. So the ADV, uh, average daily value, is about 100 billion uh, JPY. And then on the right-hand side, it shows you the breakdown of the market share. In fact, um, what I would like to mention is that uh, you need to know that um, you cannot gauge the liquidity by looking at only the trading volume on so-called on-screen order book. In fact, ETF trading takes place across diverse venues with over half of the Japanese equity ETF uh, occurring uh, OTC, meaning uh, over the counter as shown in the right uh, pie chart. And then I need to do some quick explanation um, regarding the four terms you see here. Uh, if you um, refer to the left-hand side, Arrowhead in red, uh, there is actually a trading engine by Tokyo Stock Exchange. That means um, ETF traded via the uh, 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 TSC trading engine. To the right, we have Trustnet. This is actually uh, also an exchange system, but it is kind of off auction and is meant for large uh, so-called lot or uh, basket trades. The next one is off exchange. So this is what we meant by OTC uh, contribution. The right-hand side, CQ, is actually in short for connector. This is a so-called specialized um, uh, um, so-called re request for code, um, uh, mainly meant for institutional investors. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, in this slide, uh, we show you the uh, number of uh, newly listed ETFs on Tokyo Stock Exchange since 2018. So as you can see, it is um, gradually growing and we expect more ETF to be launched uh, in our market uh, this year. Okay. Next. Okay, I've actually come to the last two um, slides of my presentation. And I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you a new index which we introduced in July last year. It's called the JPX Prime 150 Index. And the... Um, Selection criteria mm -hmm. um, uh, include um, three so-called points. The first one is so-called market capitalization. The second point is positive equity spread to be followed by um, PB ratio of more than one. The last slide, please. Okay, the last slide shows the comparison between JPX Prime 150 versus the uh, topics. And we actually back tested the data starting from 2013. And uh, in fact, the two so-called indices were doing pretty close uh, until uh, mid-2019, as you can see from this growth. And then over the last nine-year period, um, in terms of sharp ratio or the return or the risk level, JPX uh, Prime 150 um, is slightly better than uh, Topics uh, uh, Index. And with that, I end my presentation. So thank you so much for the insightful presentation once again. And I would just like to take a quick break to talk about our Poyos Mobile 3 app. Okay, now with new and improved features, 
if you want to have a community of like-minded investors and discover ideas from others, then I encourage you to scan the QR code, download the app, and take a look at our communities. My colleagues and myself post that quite often as well, and it's free to use. So currently, we have, we have separated our communities into uh, several different topics. For example, earlier on, we were talking about ETFs. You can start a discussion on ETFs in our ETF community there as well. We actually have one of our staff who is in charge of that community, and he will always be offering uh, his insights and talking about ETFs and keeping, keeping you updated on all the latest ETFs. I highly recommend checking out the communities. It's also free to use, by the way. You don't need to be a Poems account holder uh, to access our communities. You can actually just scan the QR code here, download the app. It's available on iOS and Android. Download the app, join our, create a free account. And when I mean create a free account, I mean free to use the app. You don't need to create a Poems account yet. Although I'm pretty sure after you see that some of the features, uh, you will. So uh, take a look at our Poems Mobile Tree app communities. Uh, let us know what you think of the webinar over there as well. We have a lot of our stuff. We even have technical analysis. We even have growth stocks. We even have dividend stock picks. It's all over there. It's all for free and it's all for you. Okay. Now, uh, moving on from this, uh, of course, this is a community. And if you use Telegram, Okay, you can also consider joining our Global Markets Telegram channel. We post daily US updates there, and sometimes we also have promotions and activities that are exclusive to the channels. We also cross post uh, other channels like technical analysis. We even have a stock trading, Singapore stock trading group, you know, where people discuss their ideas over there. Okay, we, um, and, you know, so if Telegram is more your cup of tea, you know, it's also more easy. Uh, a lot of people are already using Telegram. Okay, you can scan this QR code here to join our Global Markets uh, Telegram channel and slowly you will discover um, all the Telegram channels that we have to offer. We have news, we have promotions, we have activities all on Telegram as well. Okay, so now moving to the biggest ETF market in Asia. Okay, but before, just before that, okay, uh, you know, I want to show you some ETFs that will get you exposure into the Japanese markets. Uh, I would first briefly like to touch on some of the metrics that I'll be showing you shortly. I'm aware that a lot of people uh, already know, but just in case anyone is unsure, I'd just like to touch on a few of them first. Okay, the first of which is NEV or net asset value. Okay, provides fair value estimate of your investment in the fund and changes in the NEV over time reflect the performance of the underlying asset the fund holds. Now, next is the expense ratio, okay, which basically is the cost to owning this ETF. Um, earlier on, you heard uh, Mr. Lee talk about it also on the on one. Actually, we will be introducing that ETF later on. It has a very, very low uh, expense ratio. It's a very, very low cost. So in, in a sense, it's cheap. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this percentage is basically the funds assets that are used to cover operating costs, such as the administrative costs, management fees, uh, other fees like regulatory fees, shareholder reporting costs, things like that. Okay, which are necessary for uh, an ETF. Okay, the expense ratio directly impacts overall returns as well from uh, overall returns from your investment. And lower expense ratios are often attributed to higher NAV growth over time as well. Okay, and I will show you a chart. Okay, uh, of some total returns. This is a, a little bit of a hindsight thing, but it's also very interesting to see the growth of certain sectors, the growth of certain ETFs that track a specific index in the Japanese markets as well to see how it has performed over the last five years and the growth as well. If you assuming you invest, reinvested all the dividends uh, into the fund. Okay, before I move on, uh, now I'll be introducing some ETFs that you can consider given the current trend of the growing AI and semiconductor industries. Uh, however, um, it is also very good to bear in mind uh, that many vendors of devices for chip making and testing in the current trend, in the current AI environment, <coughs> excuse me, um, for chip making and testing, uh, there is uh, producers of materials and chemicals. They are found across uh, various sectors. You seldom find one in like one sector. They usually do a few different things. So, for example, later I'll introduce you to 1625.jp. Um, this is the Precision Instruments ETF, if I remember correctly. 
uh, it contains both companies that are related and not related to chip making. Uh, however, being at the core of it, yeah, chip making companies, you know, we want to follow the trend. We want to be on top of the trend even. So uh, since we're such a big ETF market, these are some of the things that we can uh, show to you for your consideration. Okay. Uh, there will be some ETFs in other sectors as well, such as automobile, uh, worth mentioning that are included as well. But I will be explaining a little bit more on the AI and semiconductor side. Uh, it's been requested from us, not just to me, but to uh, many of our other teams, to our research, to other people that are conducting webinars as well. So I would just like to uh, talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so let's let's move on to the first one. Okay, I've introduced this enough. Okay, next funds topics exchange trade of fund. Okay, this tracks the topics index. Okay, it's 1306.jp, sitting at a net asset value of 284.60 as of last week. This has a very low expense ratio of 0.057%, with a market cap of 22.97 trillion Japanese yen. Okay, uh, not, not, uh, not really dividend focused, about 1.78%, but I would like you to take a look at the top five holdings. Okay, we have very counters that are very familiar, very successful companies. They are also uh, endeavoring and delving into the latest AI trends as well as electric vehicle trends. For example, you have Toyota. Okay, this weighs at it weighs in at four point eight eight percent of uh, the next fund's uh, topics exchange traded fund. Okay, so very popular. They are also doing their own electric vehicles. Okay. Uh, known globally known company okay uh yeah um, originating from japan next we have sony group corporation we sitting at 2.39 percent weightage uh, this company as well is known worldwide they do so many different things anything from games to electronics we have sony group involved in it as well okay followed by mitsubishi financial group sitting at 2.33 percent Okay, now I'd like to uh, take a moment to talk about this next counter, which is Tokyo Electron. And I'd like for everyone to uh, just bear in mind this counter, uh, especially in the current climate of AI and semiconductors. Okay, so what if you're not very sure, because I, I, I know uh, based on the people that trade with us, okay, that uh, maybe Japanese counters have not yet taken off. This is your opportunity and one of the stocks that you could... Uh, that you could benefit from looking and learning about. Okay, so let me tell you why. Uh, Tokyo Electron offers basically comprehensive production as well as testing devices along with appliance solutions to for chip making. And these chips that are be used in uh, the in by large AI companies. Okay, it is also uh, it also happens to be the leading supplier to TSMC. And this is uh, this is basically an achievement that is comparative to uh, comparable, sorry, to applied materials, AMET and LAM research. Okay, although currently this uh, stock might be overpriced a little bit. Okay, uh, there is accelerated demand for production and testing devices for advanced chips as well. So again, Tokyo Electron uh, A zero three five JP sitting at one point nine six percent of this ETF. Okay. Uh, is something worth reading into. I don't want to go into too much of it right now, uh, but just I just wanted to share some of their notable achievements and what their core business model actually is. Okay, so and last we have uh, Kian's Corp, okay, which you'll see later on as well. So um, let me just do a quick time check. Okay, uh, now I want to move on to the next one. Okay, so. What happens if a little, uh, this is the hindsight part that I was talking earlier? We all know that uh, Japan has recently surged. Excuse me. Recently surged, there's been um, it break all time highs and there's a lot of attention coming in. So, uh, just a little fun thing. If you had invested in the, this ETF um, five years ago now, um, just before COVID started, okay, as you can see, there's this little dip. Uh, every single chart had this little dip because of COVID. So, uh, but if you had uh, invested in this, you would be sitting at a comfortable ninety two percent gain, which is uh, which is really good for five year five year period actually. Okay, so I just want to move on real quick. Okay, so next funds the Nikkei two two five ETF sitting at a uh, net asset value of forty one thousand two hundred thirty six point four. 
okay, with an expense ratio of about 0.1%, okay, with a market cap. This is also one of the very, very popular, arguably one of the most popular uh, ETFs for uh, Japan. You know, you really want to just get into the index. You just want to really get exposure into the Japanese market. Uh, maybe this is one of the things there for you. Okay, this is one of the counters, oops, sorry. This is one of the counters that is worth looking at, okay? So, uh, now I just want to zoom in into the top five holdings. We have fast retailing, 11.29%. This seems like a lot. It is a lot, okay? But I want to move past that. And you notice, you see Tokyo Electron again. Again, very, very uh, competitive company when it comes to the chip making industry. Okay, now, what I want you to do, this is the other counter that I would like everyone to maybe do some research into if you're into the whole AI trend. Okay, and that is Advantest Corporation, 6857 JP, sitting at 4.37% of this index, uh, of this ETF, sorry, weightage. Okay, now, Advantest provides testing equipment for, uh, for chip making, uh, similar, a little bit similar to Tokyo Electron. Okay, there is also accelerated demand for testing devices. Although this counter similarly to Tokyo Electron is a little, might be possibly overpriced as well. Okay, um, but you know, it is also part of, as the name suggests, it provides a lot of testing equipment and a lot of equipment that is essential to the chip making production line. Okay, and the next one is SoftBank. Every, uh, a lot of people I'm sure have heard about SoftBank. Okay, so we'll move on to something that is lesser known, but something else that you should also know about, and that is 4063 JP sitting at 2.71% weightage, and that is. Shinetsu Chemical Company Limited. Okay, Shinetsu Chemical, they create, uh, what is it called? Uh, wafer, wafer material and mix chemical products, which are crucial to the production of uh, semiconductor uh, AI chips. Okay, uh, the one thing interesting about Shinetsu Chemical is that they boast the largest glo globally global largest share for silicon wafer materials. So uh, if you're more into the AI trend and you're more into the production and you're more savvy when it comes to this, you will know that they use these flat things. Uh, I personally am not too uh, well versed in this, but they use these flat materials that they call wafers. Okay, and Shinetsu Chemical creates this wafer material that is needed to create this, uh, to create these chips. Okay, so another thing, uh, also good fun to look at. Okay, similar to the topics ETF earlier on, uh, if you were invested in this ETF, the next funds Nikkei two two five ETF, five years ago, uh, exactly five years ago today, you would be at about a hundred and two point six percent. In, uh, in your returns, which just goes to show you the real growth of the Japanese market since these two are tracking the indices. Okay, so you can really see how the growth is consistent, stable, and it's definitely showing, uh, you know, a good upside potential. Okay, now this one, I believe uh, if you are in, involved heavily in semiconductor, you definitely have heard of this already. Okay, Global X, Japan Semiconductor ETF, uh, I believe it's what is it, 2644.jp. Uh, JP. Okay, uh, and then it's a value of 49, uh, 4, 000, sorry, $4,954. Okay, uh, sorry, Japanese yen with an expense ratio slightly higher than what you've seen so far, about 0.59%. Okay, but uh, with a market cap of about 70.47 billion. Now, there's a reason that I want to bring this up in the current climate is because if you take a look at um, you take a look at the top six holdings, uh, you see Tokyo Avantes already I mentioned before, and it's not it's not a little bit you know eleven point four percent and ten point nine six percent of weightage as well. So I like to and you can see uh, I'm gonna put screen holdings aside first because I really want to focus on Disco Laser Tech and releases. Okay, so the last three. Okay, so um, again. Um, these are the counters that uh, if you're really interested in the AI, uh, these are some of the counters that you can really go and take a look at. Okay, but right now we're talking about ETF. So let me just give you a little bit about these companies. So as discussed earlier, Tokyo Electron Advantage are on the top holdings here as well. 
Uh, no surprise, this is a semiconductor ETF. Okay, now this go call, it sounds like it sounds like music, but it's actually one of the global leaders of chip cutting, dicing, grinding on back-end processes. They also have advanced technology for silicon cutting technology. So it's not it's not a music company at all. Okay, it's actually a global leader in chip cutting. Okay, which uh, as you as you can infer, it's very very important to the AI chip making industry. Now moving on, we have laser tech. So their main business is uh, scanning and testing devices, which apply optical, electronic, and microscopic technology, and they create testing devices for photo masking, which, and it's created by this thing called UEV lithography. Okay, uh, I'll say that again because it was a, it was a, a term that was foreign to me until I, until we had a little bit of research going on. Okay, so it's UEV lithography. That's UEV, L-I-T-H-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. Okay, which is crucial for advanced, uh, for advanced chips that are tinier than five nanometer nodes. Okay, so they're basically really, really small nodes, about five nanometers across. Okay, and they also have a nearly one hundred percent global share position for UEV lithography testing devices. Okay, so this is an important company. Okay, okay, now moving on to the last one. Uh, before I get too excited about laser tech, okay. Uh, Renesis engages in power analog devices and MCUs, which are micro computing units, okay, for automobiles and robotics uh, appliances as well, as long as, as well as servers and data centers. Okay, they have a pretty good, well integrated products mix, and they are a solutions provider for creating ECU components for EVs, uh, electric vehicles, uh, AD which is auto driving and EDAS, which is advanced driver assistance systems. Advanced driver assistance systems. Yes, that's right. For automobile sector clients. So you can see this, uh, I mean, we, we're not really talking about EV, but smart cars are coming up to be a thing. Okay. And uh, we're, we're running a little bit low on time. So I just want to uh, list through the rest really quickly so if again if you're invested in this uh, some time ago about uh, five years ago you will be sitting at about 106 uh, percent return so if you're really into semiconductor this is the thing that i advise you go and take a look at uh, go and read up uh, do your own research and take note of the companies that are involved in it as well uh, okay now uh, earlier on in the introduction i mentioned we were going to talk a little bit about uh, automobiles as well. So next funds topic 17 automobiles and transportation equipment ETF. Okay, uh 1622.jp with a net asset value of 36,419. Expense ratio uh not too high, 0.32 percent with a market cap 1.87 billion. This ETF is mainly focused on the sector of as it says automobiles and transportation equipment with the top five holdings in Toyota, Honda, Denso, Bridgestone, and Toyota Industries. Okay, so we are pretty familiar. I'm sure most of us are familiar with at least two of these five holdings, which is Toyota and Honda. Okay, Toyota takes up a bulk of this with 51%. That is a lot. Um, so if you are looking at, you're thinking of toying with the idea of getting into the automobile industry in Japan, you want some exposure? This might be the fun for you. Okay, uh, let's just breeze through this. Uh, five years ago until now, you'll be at about 124% of your original investment value. Okay, next one's topic 17 machinery ETF 1624.jp, sitting at about 56,000 NAV. Okay, expense ratio is 0 0.32, very similar to the previous one. Okay, with a market cap of 1.45 billion. Okay, top five holdings. Um, again, uh, we're brief. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Daikin. Okay, and Disco is here as well, Disco Corporation. Uh, okay, as well as Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Komatsu Limited. Okay, I'm gonna breeze past this. If you're interested in the machinery, uh, machinery uh, sector, okay, like industrial sector. 
okay you might consider you might want to consider doing this as well sorry okay now uh five years ago and you're now 108 percent you should be in the green okay electric appliances and precision instruments i brought this up earlier on a little bit okay so uh net asset value about thirty seven thousand six hundred ninety two with a 0.32% expense ratio. Okay, market cap 4.61 billion yen. Okay, they have top five holdings, Sony, very, very famous company as we talked about earlier. Tokyo Electron, don't forget, Tokyo Electron production and testing devices, okay, for chip making. Okay, then we have Kians, Hitachi and Hoya, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Hitachi and Hoya as well. Okay, so we're just gonna move past this. If you are interested in the precision, manufacturing precision um, instrument sector of Japan and you need a bit of exposure, uh, check out 1625, okay? Now, you'd be, if you, if you were in this five years ago and now you decide to sell, you'd be about 127% in. Okay, uh, thank you so much everyone for your time so far. Now, I would just like to move on to the Q&A section. Okay, uh, just do a quick time check. We have about, about 10 minutes. Oh, sorry, uh, someone, someone has brought up to me. It should be EUV, not UEV. Ah, okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ming Cho Lin. Okay, he's absolutely correct. It is EUV lithography. Earlier on, I made a mistake. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, Mr. Lee, let us move on to the Q&A section. So in the sub $1 billion market cap, there are a number of very attractive names, but the English disclosure for quarterly earnings or even news announcements are either very delayed or comes with a lag. Are there any steps that can be taken to improve this, please? Okay, so uh, Mr. Lee, do you have any opinions on this? Yeah, uh, in fact, in my presentation earlier on, I already mentioned that as, as an exchange, we have actually uh, continuously engaged uh, with the listed companies to encourage them to disclose uh, timely um, information in, in English. And you can see that, that there has been improvement so far over the past um, many years. And uh, this effort will, uh, will be continued by the exchange. And uh, we, uh, I also mentioned that uh, for prime listed companies come April next year, um, they will need to so-called really uh, disclose that information and in English. And uh, um, hopefully going forward, um, the, the, the companies that are not listed in Prime, um, but in other so-called, the other two uh, so-called uh, uh, market segments um, will also follow suit. So this is a continuous effort that the TSC is uh, putting in. Okay, Japanese markets have run up so much. Is it too late to participate now? Or for long-term investors, it's never too late. Uh, Mr. Lee, do you have any opinions on this? Uh, this is a question that we as an exchange cannot answer. You know, but okay. uh, in my in my previous presentation, I mentioned that according to um, the data we've seen so far, the uh, foreign investors they continue to be net buyer of uh, Japanese market, and then uh, we at the exchange and the government as well, um, we have uh, hope that because of the NISA the Nippon individual uh, savings account, uh, we will probably see some uh, shift in the investment mentality of Japanese uh, households. And, uh, but it's still early days, so we cannot say anything at this point in time. Okay, so uh, I have a question here. Are there any restrictions for foreigners to buy Japanese shares? Okay, so at the moment, there are, there are several shares which are limited uh, foreign shareholding. So um, those shares are not really in the picture. Okay, apart from that, uh, you can actually buy through poems, you can buy it online actually. There aren't any uh, major restrictions on foreigners to buy Japan shares. In a nutshell, I just want to summarize it this way. Uh, what ETF that we can use to track the pharma and biotech industry in Japan? I believe there is, uh, if I recall correctly, there should be a Global X uh, ETF on this, on this. I think it's... Uh, if I remember correctly, it should be Global X uh, Bio and MedTech ETF. Yeah. Um, in fact, there is a question that asks um, whether there are any actively managed ETFs uh, in Japan. Uh, in fact, uh, TAC is the first in the Asia Pacific to start launching actively managed ETFs. 
And if I remember correctly, uh, we probably have uh, maybe like at least seven actively managed ETF starting from um, August last year. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for that presentation once again. Uh, I'm apologize. We have to come to the end of the webinar today. Uh, if you have any, if you have any further questions, because I see a lot of open questions, but we don't have the time to get to it. Uh, you can head on over to our community to put the questions there. Okay. If you're in one of our Telegram channels, you can post the question there. One of our team members will get to it. And once more, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Mark Lee from Tokyo Stock Exchange for joining us tonight and providing us with all the insights that we never would have had without him. So, uh, Mr. Lee, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining in today. Uh, we hope to see you in our communities and on our channels. And thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you.